Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. Here is the tumor and this is the normal skin. Let's just have a quick recap of normal histology. The surface of the skin is composed of stratified squamous epithelium with this many layers of squamous cells and this basket weave pattern shows the surface keratinized layer. The underlying collagenous layer is known as the dermis. So we have the epidermis and the dermis. In the normal epidermis, there is a gradual change from cells at the basal layer with very high NC ratios or nuclear cytoplasmic ratios and also being vertically oriented to cells with low NC ratios and being more horizontally oriented close to the surface layers. And this gradual change is known as maturation. Maturation is a feature of the nine stratified squamous epithelium. Now let's have a look at the tumor. You can see that this is forming a mass and this would be grossly visible to the naked eye on the skin. The surface of this tumor mass is eroded we no longer have intact surface squamous epithelium. Instead, we have a lot of fibrin as well as neutrophils. So we have fibrino-inflammatory exudates and ulceration. And below this, we have these large sheets of malignant squamous cells, and they are invading into the dermis. These large sheets are causing the stroma of the dermis to become very cellular and also inflamed. And this is known as a desmoplastic stromal reaction, which is seen in invasive tumors. The stroma becomes very cellular with more spindle cells than usual, and also increased numbers of inflammatory cells. So we have infiltrative islands of malignant squamous cells invading into the dermis, causing a desmoplastic stromal reaction. Let's look at the squamous cells. The cells themselves show some degree of nuclear pleomorphism with enlarged nuclei with prominent nucleoli, as well as some nuclei that are not so large and with less prominent nucleoli. And again, we can appreciate this pleomorphism as we move around with some large nuclei and other nuclei that are smaller. There are some features that tell us that this is a squamous cell carcinoma. Firstly, the architecture of the malignant cells, they tend to form solid sheets and nests, and we don't see any gland formation or any lumen formation. Secondly, we see many keratin pearls, and these are these swirly, very orange structures. Let's zoom into a nice example. A keratin pearl appears as this concentric structure, which is composed of compressed cells with very dark blackish pycnotic nuclei and dense orangeophilic cytoplasm. And when we see many keratin pearls, as we see here in this tumor, it tells us that this is a well or a moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. If a squamous cell carcinoma is poorly differentiated, we will hardly see any keratin pearls at all. Sometimes we may instead see single cell keratinization, such as these single cells with very dense orange cytoplasm. And here are more examples of single cell keratinization. Another feature of squamous differentiation is the presence of intercellular bridges. And for this, we have to look at very high magnification to the space between adjacent cells. Here we can see them very clearly. They look like little finger-like bridges between adjacent cells. These are known as intercellular bridges, and they are also a feature of squamous differentiation. Squamous cell carcinoma is the second commonest tumor that arises in sun-exposed skin after basal cell carcinoma, and UV radiation causes DNA damage, which then predisposes to the formation of this cancer. 
Other risk factors include immunosuppression, precursor lesions such as actinic keratosis, long-standing inflammation, for example, in ulcers or a sinus tract, HPV infection, and certain genetic conditions such as xeroderma pigmentosum. Usually, these tumours are located in sun-exposed skin, so the face is a common sight. And grossly, they will appear as a plaque or a nodule or an ulcerated mass, as you can see here and here. If you would like to access these interactive virtual pathology specimens, you can scan these QR codes to access them in our virtual pathology museum. Microscopically, squamous cell carcinoma, as you saw, is composed of sheets or lobules of neoplastic squamous cells, and they show varying degrees of keratinization. The keratin pearls are the most obvious signs of keratinization, and if you see many of them, the tumor is generally well differentiated. We also saw single cell keratinization, and if we only see this, then the tumor is likely to be more poorly differentiated. We also saw the intercellular bridges, as you can see here, and also here between adjacent cells, which is also a feature of squamous differentiation. We can also see intercellular bridges in benign squamous epithelium, so they are not specific to squamous cell carcinoma, but rather they indicate squamous differentiation. There can be varying degrees of nuclear pleomorphism, and the prognostic factors include the size, the depth, and especially also how deep it goes, whether it goes into the subcutaneous fat layer of the skin, presence of perineural invasion and lymphovascular invasion, and the grade of the tumour, which is generally based on the nuclear pleomorphism, as well as how readily we see keratin pearls. You can access more videos as well as virtual pathology specimens through our online pathology resource PathWeb and registration is free. You can scan this QR code or you can find the link in the video description. In summary, this is squamous cell carcinoma of the skin, which is composed of invasive islands, nests and sheets of malignant squamous cells infiltrating into the underlying dermis, causing a desmoplastic stromal reaction, and with the presence of many keratin pearls, as well as discernible intercellular bridges. This particular tumour has invaded into the dermis, and the subcutaneous fat, or the subcutis, is this layer here, so we can see that this tumour has not quite reached the subcutis. Thank you.